How's it going guys and welcome back to my channel and as another week passes that means we have another Helldivers 2 weekly news roundup video and what a week it has been. We've had a hard battle with the automatons, the new warbond dropped to a slightly frosty reception, players lost medals and much more to cover but before we do start if you enjoy these kinds of videos hit that like button and if you are new here don't forget to subscribe. Operation Swift Disassembly was in full swing at the beginning of the week with us divers tasked with clearing out the automatons once and for all and we actually managed to complete it. The Hell Divers 2 socials sent out these messages. You did it Hell Divers, Operation Swift Disassembly was a success. With the bots eradicated and bugs contained, the galaxy is free once more. Followed by, today Super Earth citizens celebrated the full eradication of the automatons. Additionally, to reward their bravery, each Hell Diver has been issued an extra one minute break. Note, one minute is inclusive of the time taken to read this, Hell divers currently deployed are ineligible, and I can imagine that a few of you weren't able to take your one minute break. So straight after this, many players were speculating that this wasn't the end of the automatons with some thinking the Illuminate were about to invade us. But instead, we had to cleanse Hellmire, Crimsica, and Estenu of the bugs to clear the path for more construction of new resource farms. We only had a day and a half to do this, but then came the dreaded news. Hell divers 2 X account posting this. Somehow the automatons returned. As suspected all along, the previous bot force was merely a vanguard. A massive fleet has now begun an assault on Cyberstan and the surrounding planets. Helldivers hold back this unprovoked invasion. The fight continues. To be fair, it was a massive invasion by the automatons. They come strong and hard. And we fought long and hard, but unfortunately, the automatons proved too much for us and we did lose the battle. But with this, it only strengthened the stance for some in-game visuals detailing what planets to take or defend first, as there was a lot of planning going on on socials, which unfortunately didn't help. A lot of folks don't use socials, so it can be hard to organise stuff like this, especially when a game like Helldivers 2 leans into the player base working together. So hopefully, in future, Arrowhead will resolve this issue, because like I've just said, this is a game where we all need to be working together, and sometimes it can be hard to do that but we'll just have to see. Let's wait for Arrowhead's update on this, maybe. But as always, things do not stand still in Helldivers 2, and we have the latest major order up. And this is the Automaton Advance must be halted, establish and hold Menkent line to allow establishment of orbital defenses. So the designated planets must be under super Earth control when the order expires, and that is Menkent and Lisa. At the time of this video, we have liberated Menkent and are about 50% through liberating Lisa. With two days still to go, this one is easily completed in my opinion. So after a busy week of major orders, we kind of bumped into a problem with the medals. So something us players have noticed this week was a level cap on medals, which currently stands at 250. When logging in, I didn't actually get any medals as I was at this cap, and you don't get them back either once you spend the medals. And I feel this does need to be changed. Obviously, there needs to be cap on things. You can't just have unlimited medals. But I personally didn't know that the cap was 250. And maybe that was me just being a bit naive. But medals are an important currency in Helldivers 2 because you can spend them on super credits, which in turn helps players obtain the premium war bond. So I feel they need to up this cap. Hopefully the team over at Arrowhead can change this in a future patch. We'll just have to wait and see. But I do think it is something that does need addressing. But moving on from that, because of the increased threat we're under, we actually got some new upgrades to our fleet. Some of these are pretty good. I'm going to go through these quickly now. So in the hangar, we have the XXL Weapons Bay. This further expands Eagle Weapons Bay by removing unnecessary systems such as fire suppression, ejection, and airbags. The upgrade effect is Eagle Stratagems that drop multiple bombs will drop one additional bomb. Then moving on to the bridge, we have Enhanced Combustion. This is increased burning temperature of incendiary weapons by lacing fuel with a precisely formulated compound of thermite, white phosphorus, and some other ones that I can't read. And it says 19 other accelerants as well. The upgrade effect, fire damage from stratagems increased by 25%. Then moving on to the robotics workshop, we have blast absorption. Reinforces centuries with expanded polystyrene pieces, peanut shaped variety, which absorb thermal and blast energy. And the effect of this is centuries take 50% less damage from explosions. That's a nice one there. Then we got orbital cannons, atmospheric monitoring, Grants subscription to data stream of live weather conditions, allowing for increased accuracy in orbital targeting. And the effect of this is orbital HE barrage spread reduced by 15%. Engineering Bay, circuit expansion, augments electrical weaponry by safely and connecting multiple interior arc extenders into one long linear chain. Upgrade effect, lightning arcs fired from weapons and turrets jump to one additional enemy. And finally, we have the Patriotic Administration Center. We have the superior packing methodology. 
authorizes an eight week crew training course in SPM, resulting in increased supply box capacity. And the effect of this is resupply boxes, refill support weapons with the maximum number of carryable magazines. So as we can see there, we've got some much needed upgrades, but some are quite expensive. So get farming those samples, guys. Let us know what you think of these down in the comments below as well. And moving on, we had the new war bond, Democratic Demolition, dropping earlier this week, and it actually wasn't well received. Players actually feel the gear isn't that good, along with opinions that war bonds are being released too frequently and Arrowhead should concentrate on fixes. This meme here has been thrown around a bunch lately, but honestly, I actually like the Adjudicator. It feels snappy to me and I can pop bots heads and crit spots fairly easy with it. It just feels really nice and that is just obviously my opinion. I've not tested the crossbow yet but I have heard that it's underwhelming. But players have been praising the grenade pistol and some of the armour is not working as intended due to a mix up with Spitz posting this in the Discord. Regarding the CE27 Groundbreaker armour, we're aware of a slight mix up that resulted in it going live with the servo assisted passive instead of the engineering kit passive as advertised. This should be changed back in an upcoming hotfix. Please keep this in mind if this armor is one of the reasons you're thinking of purchasing the new war bond. So yeah, if the armor is one of the main reasons that you're getting this war bond, just probably hold off for now until they get a fix out for this. And at the time of this video, there isn't a fix as of yet. We do not have any updates. But players have been posting on socials how they would like fixes to be implemented instead of new war bonds every month. This user saying, Arrowhead, you have given so many war bonds in such a short time. That's great. So now give yourself some time to iron out some bugs instead for a good couple of months if needed, please. With another post stating, content isn't fun with game breaking bugs. New content doesn't hit as hard when it's spoiled by game breaking bugs. Goes on to say, new thermite grenade, too bad damage over time effects don't work unless you're the host. 25% extra fire damage, too bad damage over time effects don't work unless you're the host. An extra enemy hit by arc weapons, too bad they're incredibly inconsistent and blocked by a light breeze and one of them is so unbelievably bad, I've literally never seen a random use it. Resupply boxes will fully refill support weapons, this sounds great, what do you mean it doesn't even work? Arrowhead, I am begging you, take the time to fix your growing list of known issues, I promise we can all wait a couple of more weeks than usual before you drop another balance patch or content drop. Stability is breaking at the seams and it's beyond frustrating at this point. And then this player then explained why war bonds are not delayed. Delaying war bonds won't fix the game. Seeing a lot of frustrated sentiments about the growing list of issues in the game, which is valid, but I wanted to voice some perspective as I don't think some people understand these aspects of dev work. The teams that make the war bonds are not the same teams that work on bugs. Armor designers and weapon designers are not fixing code. We also know from the API that there are several armors and weapons that have been released that just prove a Arrowhead, I'm guessing, makes these war bonds well in advance of their release. Arrowhead are experienced devs. They know what they're doing. Sure, this player count is new for them, but that doesn't change that they have a very capable team on their hands. Bugs aren't always easy fixes. The AMR scope, for example, seems like an easy tweak, but the devs have spoke on this and told us that it would take longer than expected. Delaying a war bond to focus on bugs isn't a thing that Arrowhead needs to do. They have dedicated teams of devs for different aspects of the game, and not all the work is universally doable by anyone. I can guarantee that there is a team working week after week on these issues and doing their best to ensure that these issues are fixed to the best of their ability. Lastly, if the bugs are seriously frustrating you so much, take a break from the game, all of the content will still be around. And they're absolutely right, as frustrating as it can be. I get that there's probably a lot of people here that are playing this game for the first time that haven't really delved into the live service model as well. This shit happens, unfortunately, and you do kind of need to be patient. If there's some really serious bugs that are taking a long time to get fixed, then maybe there should be some complaints, but you do need to understand that things like war bonds or battle passes are totally separate. But at the end of the day, we're all armchair devs and sometimes we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. So Arrowhead are fixing stuff pretty quickly and they're even being super transparent with us. Let me know what you think about the war bond down in the comments below, guys. Hopefully it's not all negative. And speaking of issues, as always, we got a new patch at the beginning of the week. It was a short one, so I'll read through it very quickly. So we have patch 01.000.202. 
Now this update includes stability fixes. So with the gameplay, we had updated the statue wire for weapons to take into account any explosive damage done by them. This is to give weapons that do damage with explosive projectiles a more fair representation in the UI. Most notably affected is the PLAS-1 Scorcher. Then fixes, fix some crashes that occurred when deploying to missions, fix some crashes that occurred during extraction and right after it, fix crashes that could occur if the squad deployed a large amount of support weapons, fix various crashes that would occur during gameplay, fix the crash that could occur when using heat-based weapons, fix crashes which could occur if a player died while using the jetpack, fix the crash which would occur when large volumes of enemies were present, fix the crash which could occur when the player picked up a snowball, fixed crash which could occur when completing an objective, fixed hang that could occur while navigating the social menu, picking up medals and super credits will no longer lock the player in place. I will leave the link to this down in my descriptions below so you can go through all of that if you want to look through their own issues. And because Arrowhead are such good guys, they now have a poll section over on their Discord server. We only have two polls up so far, and these were what do you think about marksman rifles in Helldivers 2 and how do you feel about the new democratic detonation war bond? Do you know what? It's something at the end of the day and it's a good way to vote on how you feel about certain items. And if you ask me, it's very democratic as well. So it just aligns up very nicely. So when they do get the polls going, get voting and get your opinion heard guys. And I wanted to talk about this very quickly and this is Armour Variety. A user by the name of Pengu mocked up this infographic here about how Arrowhead could add more variety to armor and create more class diversity. I like this idea, especially coming from games like Destiny and The Division. Adding mods to certain bits of armor or having bits of armor with exotic traits would be good, especially with transmog being much sought after as well. Just a few examples. So the medium armor, which is on the right in the middle is the armor that I run, the X03 Prototype 3. The description, because this prototype's wires operate at 400,000 volts, it also includes a handy rubber underlayer for insulation. The perks, high power, weapons cool down 20% faster, electrical conduit provides 95% resistance to arc damage, and light footed 10% increased running speed. And let's just go down to the middle bottom, CM21 Trench Paramedic Light Armor. The description, the suit was once designed to hold a variety of battlefield medical equipment. Now it holds a generous supply of stims. The perks, med kit increases stims by plus two, experimental stims, stims duration lasts plus two seconds. I think this is really cool and I really hope Arrowhead do add this in. But speaking of transmog, Arrowhead frontman Palstead has said we are not getting that. In a post under this tweet, a user mentioned a transmog system and Polstead replied, we are not doing transmog. It doesn't make sense. Equipment looks different because it has different effects. Swapping one for the other is like having an apple that tastes like bacon or the other way around. I'm just gonna come out and say that I respectfully disagree with him here as I feel transmog works in all life service games and it adds some much extra replayability and build variety. But let me know what you guys think about this down below in the comment section. Obviously, the man says it himself, we're not getting it, but we don't know, things do change in the future, so we'll just have to wait and see. But that is the end of the video, guys. If you're still here, thank you so much. And if you have enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. It helps me out and it helps the video out massively. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more Helldivers 2 content. But as always, take care and I'll see you on the next video, divers.